See, I tried to put turn down my try to turn down my mic in the previous scene so you guys don't hear me because it's on even though it's not plugged it's not in this that scene is not supposed to use the mic but it does so I turn it down and then I forget to turn it back on please tell me you can hear me now books and yarn can hear me okay Grabbing, good, good. Grabbing the right mic and all of that. No, no, I was not testing your ability to lip read, Rambos. So I'll start over. Because no one heard me, anything I said. This is I Should Be Writing, number 550. My name is Merle Lafferty. I talk about writing and all of the baggage we carry when it comes to writing. It is December 15th, 2020. We're still here. So hello to everybody in the chat. We got Kit, we got Will, Cheryl, Rambos, Todd, Underpo, Books and Yarn, Steffi, Wordathon, Kit. I think that's everybody. But uh, yeah, thanks for dropping by, folks. A um, couple of things about the streaming. I finally rage quit the rock, rock parties yesterday. I was not terribly into them because there's so much to go through to get them going and then we had such a disastrous attempt at watching Santa Claus Conquers the Ma Martians I mean it's like the movie was already bad but our experience in trying to watch the movie was even worse hey Bill so uh, I decided that until Amazon and Twitch can get that um, integration a little bit smoother. I'm not going to uh, be doing the watch parties anymore. Sorry about that, if anybody was enjoying them. Uh, the audience was not that large, and I didn't raise a lot, a lot of money for Extra Life. So I'm just kind of chalking this up to sometimes you have ideas, and they crash and burn. And you just keep going. That's... um. That's basic creative life 101 right there. But just in case y'all are planning on your, um, still working on your end of the year charity giving, uh, Duke Children's Hospital and Extra Life, uh, the link is in the chat. And I'll try to remember to put the link in the show notes. I will put the link in the show notes because I'm writing show notes down now. Yeah, my goal was to make uh, enough money to force me to watch the Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas movie, which was considered by Rotten Tomatoes the worst movie in the world at 0%. Um, but that didn't work out. The whole watch party thing, man. I tried. It was fun. Sometimes. But, um... So there's that. And I am... Uh, I guess I'll be podcasting next week. Maybe not on Thursday. Thursday's Christmas Eve, right? I can't see a calendar. I think Thursday's Christmas Eve. I probably won't be podcasting on Thursday, but I will be podcasting on Tuesday. Thank you, Books and Yarn. So, um... Had a little freak out. I talk to a friend of mine every week, and he's sort of my business manager, and he tries to help me manage all the crap that I have going on, all the plates I'm spinning, as they say. And I was looking at my list today and kind of freaking out because I had some migraines last week and did not get a lot done. So, um, everything that was due last week is now shoved onto this week and I'm starting to panic a little bit. So, and part, part way through the discussion, I said, oh, by the way, I'm streaming today and Thursday and Tuesday and I don't know what I'm talking about. And, uh, so because this is the problem I'm having right now, he suggested I talk about productivity in December during the holidays. And the funny thing is, I thought that this December would be easier because, because of the pandemic, you know, we don't have any parties to go to, we don't have any concerts to go to. Um, my daughter's in college, and so even if 
it was no pandemic, we wouldn't have her concerts to go to. So those are like the big things that always uh, dominated December in the past. And somehow the days are still filling up. I've been listen, uh, re-listening to the audio drama that came out last year on Audible called Sugar and Booze. I think that's what the name of it is. Um, I'm checking right now. It's uh, written by Anna Gasteyer and uh, features Anna Gasteyer and Maya Rudolph. Oh, Holiday Greetings from Sugar and Booze. It's the story of uh, best friends in college who gives each other the nickname Sugar and Booze. And how they grow up and continue their lives and drift apart and get back together. And it's very funny. And uh, it's, it's told in part by their holiday letters. And the holiday letters always seem to be doing like, we're so busy. And I realized every, everybody in America does that. I don't know if it's a global thing or not, but it's almost a, pr- pr- a proud thing of, of, of how busy we all are and the thought of if, if you're not super busy then clearly you have room in your schedule to fill it or you are lazy sometimes it's a moment of oh, a, a thing of pride where people talk about how incredibly busy they are oh maybe you're not as busy as me that dog is curling herself around a wire that'll be fine So I'm trying to fit uh, the streaming and some stuff going on with my daughter into my day. She's got finals right now, so we're all trying to remember that we wouldn't be seeing her much if uh, she were at school. And and we wouldn't be hearing from her much, obviously, not seeing her. And so, um, yeah, under Pope, if you're not running around crazy busy and working yourself into oblivion, what kind of person are you? Exactly. Perhaps someone who's content. I don't know. But I think uh, we... I'm sure there's a... A syndrome named after some scientist, but you know how the work... The work stretches to fill the space. That if you have eight hours to do five things, you'll do the five things and it'll take eight hours. And if you have eight hours to do ten things, you'll do the ten things and it'll take eight hours. Of course, that does have a logical end point where it's simply impossible to do a certain number of things in a certain period of time. But I think we're programmed to always say we're busy and always look at what we have to do as just a little bit too much. I don't know. One thing I'm dealing with with my ADD is how I'm trying to be very conscious of not knowing how long it takes to do things. I'm still not able to get dressed and uh, ready for the stream at exactly 1230. Maybe that should be my new goal. New goal. Let's write that one down. Um, twelve thirty on time. So Parkinson's law. Thank you, Rambos. Um, Work expands t- as to fill the time available for its completion. Yeah, it's interesting. I read a book about that where all s- along the same lines is if you try to tell yourself you're going to do X amount of work and Y amount of time, your brain will do the magical calculation of how much energy to give you in order to do that. Whereas if you needed to do X amount of work and Y amount of time, but then you're hand- handed Z amount of work, It'll wear you out. And um, the drives north, either to see uh, my husband's family in Buffalo or to um, pick up our daughter in Boston, they were, you know, it, it, it's tiring to drive 12 hours and then arrive in Buffalo. And then we were always, always very tired the next day. And, and But then we drove 12 hours knowing we would pick up our daughter and then drive 12 more hours. And that, it was hard, but it was okay. We did it. And I think it was because my body and brain knew that I needed enough energy to drive to, or to be in the car, obviously. I didn't drive the whole way. But two 12-hour shifts. So, you know, 
we're cap our brains know we're capable of more than we think we are. It's uh, interesting. But my thinking is, what did I write down? Yes, accountability. I just joined the accountability club on Patreon. And uh, hey, Fire Rider, good to see you. Glad you made it. Um, the accountability club, it starts, our first meeting is tomorrow. And I'm interested to see how it's going to go because I don't think we're going to, we're have we're in very small groups. And I don't think Patreon's going to actually be there with us. I think there are worksheets I need to do. Oh, that's right, worksheets. <laughs> Put that on the list, yay! Um, it was interesting. I was looking at the people in my group. There are um, two men, two women. Two of us are podcasters. Two of them are musicians. There's three men and one woman. And three white people and one person of color. That's the demographics. And then when we, and I started to look at what my other fellow patrons, Patreon creators did. There's one that does a, uh, I haven't listened to it yet, but it's a sex positive podcast. So I'm assuming it's got, it's pretty adult. I know a lot of people have done sex positive stuff. It's, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm just saying that I'm, I'm betting it's an adult themed podcast. And then someone else was a um, piano composer for worship. So, and then there's like me and another musician. And I'm thinking, this could be interesting. I, I, I did not know what to do with that. And I was wondering. And unfortunately, and I don't know if he's lying or, and just bowing out or he's telling the truth, but the composer said that he wasn't going to be able to make our little group because he bit off more than he could chew, too busy, etc. Yes, we all walk into a bar, exactly. Um, so it's just going to be me and, and another podcaster and musician. So, But I bring it up because of accountability. I think um, one thing that really helps me when I talk to my business manager is just going over stuff and keeping track of what I'm trying to get done and the accountability involved. And I think especially now, I would have said, last year I would have said especially freelancers, but I think it has to do with now that a lot of people are working from home, it's uh, y'all are feeling what I feel all the time, which is, you know, a little bit of loneliness because I just don't see people. And uh, I think the accountability thing is, is really important to have somebody. And I know a lot of you, if you're working from home, you're probably connected via Zoom or, or Meet or whatever with your office. But it helps me. It helps me put everything into perspective. That's right. I got off on a tangent. Hey, Christian Writing. Thanks for the subscription. Um... So, uh, what I was going to say about the measurement of time and figuring st stuff out with ADD is, um, my latest mistake was assuming that, like, I could do something from 12 to 12.30, and then I could do something from 12.30 to 1. And, you know, I never take into account even the fact of just needing to shut down one program and bring another one up or go to the bathroom or get water and then or be stressed out that I didn't take that into account and end up late and because I'm stressed out I make more mistakes um yeah I tried to do back-to-back -back streams and my computer did not like that at all it it, it got very confused and a couple of the programs I use uh, froze and it was just awful and I need to remember that that pretty much everything needs a little bit of a buffer around it even if the buffer is just to walk downstairs and get a drink and come back upstairs I think that's why the uh, Pomodoro method has the little breaks built in I love the Pomodoro method until the problem comes up that um, 
when I stop working and start doing a break, then it's hard to stop doing the break and get back to working. Which inevitably means I get really into work and then I do that burnout thing. So still trying to balance that. But I do think that the accountability thing is a really... its It's been a game changer for me. Just having someone to talk to about what I'm trying to get done and where my priorities are. So... And you know, how to... batch things and you know if I have to do if I have to take my daughter to an appointment um is it possible I can work on some escape artist stuff while I wait for her etc instead of you know play fallout shelter on my phone which I would never do no but yeah um like I said, I'd, I'd normally be doing a lot of stuff in the evenings. And now I just feel like I'm tired during the evenings. Because my brain doesn't require me... My brain's not looking at the evening going, Okay, we need to book in, bookmark this much energy to go to this concert. Um, stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's fascinating to, to think about what your brain is capable of. On the other hand... It's strange that there are boundaries and limitations put in that you are not even aware of. So I'm trying to take my awareness of them and actually do something useful with it or, or make the right decisions or I don't know. But we did have one email uh, from a new listener. It was very, very nice. I'm going to get to that. Um, and while I'm pulling this up, if you guys want to talk about anything, um, or got questions, just let me know. Um, that's what I'm here for. Right, um, Mitchell writes, what are your thoughts on pseudonyms? Is that something I should even be worrying about right now? In short, no. No, work on making your writing the best it can be. And then when you sell something, you will have a chance to talk about it with your publisher, whether you want a pseudonym or not. Um, any solid writers groups online that would be helpful for advice, alpha beta readers, and what have you? Um, I've been looking. I'll be looking, but I seriously doubt I'll have. I have anything local. Well, here's the thing: with pandemic, I hope you don't have anything local, or if you do, I hope you wouldn't go there. But, um, I know people are gonna do whatever they're gonna do. I can't stop you. But, uh, hey, Kay Kimmy. Yes, there's a dog on the dog cam, finally. She's wrapping herself around a, a cord because she likes to make me stress out. Um, so, uh, yeah, the thing about writers groups is you should be able to find some via your library or meetup.com in a normal world but it's not a normal world world right now and yes yeah, she's not biting at fire rider that's true um but the thing is i've not been in a writer's group in very long time and so i'm wondering if the chat can help me out or if you're listening to this on the feed later if you can help me out if anybody is working with an online writer's group that takes you know people from anywhere let me know because the stuff that i've recommended I've been recommending for over a decade and I don't even know if they're any good anymore so is anybody in the chat doing uh any of the writers groups I am curious about your experience Cat Rambo's discord that's right I keep hearing wonderful things about Cat Rambo uh she's doing a lot of discord stuff a lot of write-ins a lot of uh support for people right now so um I will put that in the show notes definitely I meet my critique group through my local Nano's Facebook group. Okay, that's a good kit. I like that. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, go to nanorimo.org, even if you don't do NanoRimo, because they have people, um, they have forums 
for a variety of groups. And there will probably be a group there for your area. It might be that the only area that you identify with is the entire state you're in. I don't know how rural you are or anything, but, um, you know, like around me, there'll be like a, probably a Raleigh-Durham group that did meetups and probably a Raleigh group and probably a Durham group, things like that. So that would be a good place to find like-minded people. Even if you don't do NaNoWriMo, it's possible they're building writers groups. Thank you very much, Kit. I forgot about that. Yes, Cat Rambo has a cool name. Um, you know, before the, the Rambo is a legitimate last name. And her name is Catherine. So, she's Cat Rambo. My crit group has been going on so long I can't remember how we started. Well, that that's a good sign, Under Pope. It's good that you guys have worked well together that long. I don't know if you've worked well together. You could be completely dysfunctional, but I hoped you wouldn't uh, stick with it that long if you were. So those are all good advice. Thank you very much, guys. Um, I don't think I have any more emails. Speaking of emails, if you're a Patreon supporter at the $3 or up level, I'm not going to go into the details because, frankly, it's just back you know, back-end Patreon annoyance, but if you want a holiday card from me, it will be so much easier for me if you respond to the Patreon message that went out today, because otherwise I have to chase you down one by one and see if I have your address, and if I don't, I have to write you and ask for it, and mass emailing everybody available and just saying, look, please just send it to me so I'll have it in one place. That would help me out a lot. Fluff Yeti says, Your dog is adorable. It's been a while since I've caught a stream and you've got a great overlay now. Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm really happy with the neon Christmas overlay. I like it a lot. Um, and dog cam. I like that I can finally have dog cam. And remember to put the dog in the room for her to be on dog cam. She does not look comfortable, but sometimes she puts herself into a weird position. I'm not a dog. Underpope says, uh, My writer's group works well together. At least one of us now writes full-time, and two others make significant income from their writing. I'm not one of them, but... Um, it's good to have different levels of career, because then you can have people helping other people out when they reach a new stage in their career. So it sounds like you will have... You know, when you start selling, or start selling more, you'll have them there to help you out. Sorry, I'm making sure I can understand my, um, handwriting. Um, I think I've asked this before, but I'm going to ask it again. Um... Back to accountability, would be anybody inter be interested in me continuing the write-ins that we tried to do over NaNoWriMo? I've been thinking about that. Um, it won't take the place of I should be writing. It would be an extra stream. Yes, yes, okay. Um, um so I did a I did a poll on Patreon asking the ideal time for streams, and this was the second most popular, which is good. But the most popular option was 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, those of you saying yes in the chat, is this time or 3 p.m. Eastern better for you? Because with my luck, I would just, you know, schedule it and nobody could actually make it. All right. 3 p.m. is the uh, Pacific lunch hour. Yeah, Cheryl, sorry. Well, maybe I could do one each. One, one at each time. We'll see. Because it seems pretty split. 
Um, I do want to accommodate folks. We'll see if I can add the extra stream in. That's that's another thing. It's like, I think this doesn't take a lot, but it does. But the thing is, the right ends, they're not going to be like VODs that I want to keep forever or stuff I want to put in the stream. So I don't need to do anything with the content once we're done with the right end. Hmm. I'll think about this. I'll be doing a lot to my uh, January schedule. I've already removed all the watch parties. Um... But yeah, things are going to change. Bill wants to know if I've ever tried to write poetry. I've recently read some Chinese poetry from the Tang era and it amazed me how short poem could tell an amazing story just in itself. I have? This is not me being humble or self-deprecating. This is me knowing where my strengths and weaknesses lie. One of my weaknesses is word usage. Like, there are people who can write um, sentences that just make you want to cry. Just beautiful, descriptive, evocative, just, and this is just in prose. Neil Gaiman, China Mieville, uh, Chelsea Summers. Her, her, her book is about a uh, female cannibal serial killer, but her descriptions of both food and murder are very, very visceral and very engaging. So I, I do recommend a certain hunger if that is your thing. If it's not your thing, stay away because it, it is a lot of, uh, it's pretty graphic. But um, I, I don't have that skill. Also, I'm, I'm, because people assume writers are naturally good with words and have, would be great at Scrabble, this has made me hate Scrabble even more just because people assume I would be good with it because I'm a writer. Um, I just don't, I'm not good with words themselves. The perfect word, the right word, the, I just, and, and that's almost entirely what poetry relies on. So, no. I, I can't do poetry. I really admire people who can, but, um, yeah, I can't. Just, you know, description and perfect word usage are not my strong points. Anne says, I write poetry occasionally. I've published a poetry book. That's cool. How do you go about, um, doing your when you approach a poem, is it any different than the way you p approach a story or a book? I mean, with the, um... <laughs> I don't know if you see it or not, but with the help of Devo Spice, I, um... I wrote a rap based on the Milton pamphlet, Arapagitica in my new book. I don't know if it's good or not, but <laughs> I did, I did do that. Um, keep talking amongst yourselves. I'm going to make sure that the dog doesn't pull the light over. Hello, sweetie. Let's move the foot. Okay. Yay. Okay, sorry about that. So, po approach poetry, how does Anne do it? Poems are sometimes easier to write when they come from the heart. I don't have to plot them like I have to do in fiction. That's interesting. Because I just worry so much about word usage and my... If I go for rhyming, it's all the simple stuff of cat and hat and... Yeah. And even then, it's like... <laughs> Dr. Seuss did fine with those words, and he was brilliant, so, yeah. I think writing poetry, poetry is most similar to writing a short story. You want to pick up singles, sustain focus, and mood. True. True, Rambos, that's true. Underpope thinks my dog is cute. Yes, she's very cute. She's got a very squashy face, and it's very adorable. 
Um, tips for writing short stories. I'm going to try writing them as a challenge in 2021. It's a completely new text style for me. Well, uh, I have lots of tips, but that's a very broad range. Um, first, the metaphorical description of a short story, which is imagine a novel as a big, grand painting that covers an entire wall, and a short story would be if you took a tube and just looked through the tube at one spot of the painting, and that's your short story. Um, you kind of need to hint that the rest of the world's there, but you don't have to talk about it at, at, at great distance. Okay, K. Kimmy, it's good to see you. Uh, hope the internet gets fixed soon. Um, and also, uh, a novel is a, you know, grand seven course meal while a short story is a perfect, like, piece of truffle or chocolate or something. Um, and says, short stories are harder than poetry for me because I get started and don't know when to stop and keep editing it to death. Oh yeah, that's a, that is, that's dangerous. Reads, he has a free course on writing short stories. Uh, thank you for that. I should write that down. Readsy. Okay. So, uh, there's that. Remember, you're not going to want too many people. Not going to want too many characters. Just do, um, especially starting out, just like two or three. And remember to give everybody, everybody must want something in every scene. Whether they get it or not is up to you. And they have to, um, you know, Set up, conf set up building tension, conflict, resolution. You can always remember to pick your favorite short stories and read them and try to take some notes as to where the author did what, how they built the tension, how they released the tension, how they, where they decided to cut scenes. That's all stuff you can uh, learn from. Okay, Kimmy says, I have the same problem with short stories, except I can't stop adding more plot. Yeah. Anne says, I have some short stories written, but I'm rebranding the book of stories I wrote a few years ago, and some of them may get expanded into novellas. That's interesting. And Rambo says, for me, short stories shouldn't be so much about plot as about a character, theme, or mood. Maybe a single idea, though that can easily grow too big too fast. Yeah. Uh, Cheryl writes, when scheduling projects for the next year, what tips, uh, what tips you off that you're scheduling an unrealistic amount? Oh God, I don't know. I really don't. That's, that's one of my weaknesses. I can't really tell you. Um, just, sorry, watching the dog, making sure she doesn't knock over the other light. Okay, she's settling down. So, um... My heart is saying write all the things, but realistically I might be able to do only one novel and a few short stories, trying to set myself up to not beat myself up for perceived lack of productivity. I think maybe in your case you might want to shoot for consistency rather than finished projects. I mean, have a goal of maybe one or two projects, but really if you can try to have a schedule and even if it's not going to be every day at least say that you're going to be writing on a regular basis and try to hit that and once you try to hit that the rest of the stuff with the short stories and the novel should take care of themselves I think consistency is going to be one big thing I'm thinking about I have a bad habit of scheduling meetings in the morning and I keep thinking, I want to get up and write first thing. But then I have meetings. And then it's like an hour until my stream. So, I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah, I think consistency should be where you focus with uh, next year. And if you, want, if you want to have one big project goal, you can do that. But, um, yeah. 
Uh, Fire Rider, I have a short story idea, but do they have to have a whole arc in them? This one's just fun, but then I look at uh, Mary Robin at Kowal's stories and think, well, maybe this isn't a good story idea. It's very flat. Don't... Oh, it's hard. It's hard. On one hand, try not to compare yourself to people, especially somebody like Mary Robinette. I mean, she's amazing and she's been doing it a long time. Um... But also, not every story is the same. If you, if you insist that every story has to have, you know, introduce characters, introduce a conflict, build tension, have a climax, have a resolution, then um, the ones who walk away from Omelas would not have been a short story. Wouldn't be listed as a short story. That is the very famous Ursula K. Le Guin story, uh about, I guess, the price of Utopia, but there's not, like, characters. That, that That's a story about an idea, not about people or a specific person. Um, so while I do believe you should focus on the basics when you're starting out, just to make sure you nail them down, if you have an idea to write a short story about something, then write it. You know, it's, it's, I, I'm, this is me talking to myself. I've been getting in my own head and messing myself up for a while now because, um, well, I'll tell a story. You can search for it if you want. This is a clean podcast, but I'm going to be talking about some concepts that are not clean, but they're going to be vague. There's a, I guess by now it's almost... An urban legend. I don't, it's not an urban legend. It's it's a true story. I think you can find it on Making Light. But um, years ago at Clarion, apparently there was a writer who uh, wrote a story. I forget. I forget where it starts. But apparently they wrote a story and it was uh, too light, too fluffy. Had dinosaurs or something. And and the instructor for that week's like. This need this is too too bouncy too light. It needs something something tougher. It's like you need more sodomy, and they're like okay, and then the next week they you know the students started writing dark stuff, and then someone looked at their stories at the end. It's like no, at the end of the week you need people look at the stories. Like, it needs more dinosaurs, and then you know the third week teacher came in and started reading these stories and just went to the other teachers going, what have you told these people? I've gotten a whole bunch of stories about dinosaurs and sodomy. And, um, you know, the moral is you, you have to find the right balance of dinosaurs and sodomy. And you can use that either literally, as these students did, or you can use it metaphorically in that, do you want to tell a more experimental story that's harder to write or do you want to tell a formulaic story that uh, hits all the right plot points for people's satisfaction? You... And really the answer, even though I didn't phrase that quite right, I my point is that you write the story you want to write and once you're done you can look at it and see if it lands. And if it doesn't land, then work on it or say, well, I tried something and it failed. Um, but the thing is, I, I've been having a problem of actually someone saying that I'm too focused. I'm too balanced between dinosaurs and sodomy in my story. And I became frozen wondering which, do I make it darker or lighter? What do I do? And it was really, I was questioning every plot point I had. I was questioning every scene I was going to write. And I realized that I don't plan my books that way. I don't plan these projects that way. And so I needed to just start writing, write what I wanted to write. And then on edits, if I got to make it more dinosaurs or more sodomy, I can do that. But I just had to remember that if I, if I worry about it too much, I'll talk myself out of it. And you never want to do that. So if you want to write a short story about the idea, about the fun idea, then write it. Don't worry about how Mary Robinette writes her stuff. Kit says, I can write fanfic drabbles, but when it's original fiction, they just get rambly and sprawly. Well, you can do uh, 
write a fanfic Drabble and then rewrite it as original characters or original setting or, or, you know, as they say, file off the serial numbers. Um... Christian says, I read somewhere that uh, something has to change by the end of a short story, even if that change happens in the reader. Even if that change happens in the reader. That's interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay. But yeah, it, it's... that That's pretty much goes for every story, though. I mean, you, you need... That's what plot is. It, it's about change. And, um, my daughter had a brilliant view of, I mean, there's a funny Christmas musical about a zombie apocalypse called Anna and the Apocalypse. And it's got a song at the beginning where a handful of kids are singing they have to break away and the other half saying, please stay, I can't, essentially saying I can't change. And by the end, my daughter pointed out that every one of the kids who said they couldn't change, that, that ev they wanted everything to stay exactly the same, they all died. While the ones who were embracing and seeking change survived. Which was... blew my mind. I'm sorry for the slight... Uh, spoiler there. But it is... Uh, it's a pretty subtle, deep message for a, for a funny apocalyptic zombie movie. Apocalyptic zombie musical, I should say. Why can't my short stories be as good as Ted Chang? I don't know, Under Pope. Why can't any of us? And then Rambo says, because the Ted Chang is a master of the form. Yes. It, it, don't, don't compare yourself to Ted Chang or Mary Robin at Kowal or... N.K. Jemison or John Scalzi. I just don't. It, that way lies madness. I had to stop reading The Expanse when I was writing Six Wakes. Not because I didn't think they had a whole lot in common, but their style was making me jealous and making me doubt my own style. And I couldn't do that. So I had to stop reading it. So I just would stop feeling bad about myself when I read it. It's brilliant stuff. I love The Expanse, but I could not read it at that point in my life because I was trying to write my own space murder thing. And says, what's really challenging is writing those 500 word stories for Furious Fiction in the first weekend of every month. What's Furious Fiction? Well, I'm waiting for you to answer that, and I'll go on. What are your favorite sources for writing exercises? Asked Christian. After a really bad October, November, giving myself permission to be unproductive this month. Good. But I'm back at it come January, and writing exercises were my to-do list before things went south. Um, there's a number of books out there with writing prompts. I would probably start there. Um, yeah, I, I guess I would start there. I think, uh, Ursula K. Le Guin has one. My book I should be writing is out of print, but, uh, the ebook is still available and that has writing prompts. And I'm sure that some very on point organized blogger writer has some sort of writing prompt delivery service. I, I would not... Somebody somebody like Joanna Penn. That sounds like something that, that she would really be good at. My wife and I watch Annie and the Apocalypse every year now. It's our new holiday tradition. Yay! Yeah. Excellent music. Fun story. Sad story sometimes. Breaks a lot of uh, zombie... Movie molds. Appreciated that. Writing Book of Days is really good, says Will. And says it's a monthly contest that the Australian Writers' Center holds on the first weekend of every month. They have a criteria that you have to follow and the stories can be no more than 500 words. If you win, you receive $500. Wow. That is, that is awesome and it's challenging. 
Uh, and are you in Australia, or is this is this open worldwide, or what's the what's the deal there? Because that's a really really neat idea. I I like the people who really well, like me doing Twitch with I should be writing. It's it's this schedule forces me to do the podcast when I might go. Ah, I don't feel like it on a regular day. People who do who make themselves do something creative on that kind of schedule. Um, you'll create a lot more more and better stuff than you expect you will. I'm in the U.S. and it's open worldwide. That's very cool. I'll write that one down too. Australian Writers Center. Yeah, I think it's middle of the night in Australia, so... So, um, yeah, some people have self-imposed, um, write a story every week, write a story every month kind of thing. Um, that might be, when you do stuff like that, you will get better. You'll learn that, as Matt and I say on Ditch Diggers, that, that when you have to write, You'll, you'll, you'll write, and you may hate it, but a lot of times when you look back, you won't be able to tell the difference between the good days and the bad days. And that's on a, on a bad day when I realize I still need to get writing done, I try to hold on to that. Just the emotions I'm feeling right now may not reflect in the book if I do my job right, and then I can focus on getting it, um... Just getting the words down, and later on, they'll be all shiny and happy and new. Not really sure what my point was there, but... Lots of writing good will teach you more. How's that? Oh, I'm gonna roll over, but there's a light in the way. Doggy. I like having dog cam. It's cute. It's comforting. Under Pope says, I did a story a week every week in 2007. Some of them were good, and one was published on Pseudopod. Others were not so good. Yeah, well, that's that's the case. Um, Jonathan Colton did a song a week in 2006, I think, and that pretty that really launched his career. And my favorites of his songs were some of the ones that were weirder, like. Um, now I can't remember the name of it. But it's it's like family. It's not family drama, but it's family something. And he had a friend who worked on a reality show. And he took... Goodness. He took uh, clips from the reality show and tried to tell a story with them that was not related to the show at all. And put music underneath. Sibling rivalry, thank you. Thank you, Under Pope. That's one of my favorites of his. I don't know. Just the way he puts it together is really, really good. Um, and then Beatnik Turtle did a song a day a couple of years later. Which some days you could tell they were really, really, really reaching. But again, sometimes those show to be very, very creative. The one I'm thinking, the first one that comes to mind is Ants, where instead of singing a song about ants, they're playing music and, hi, yes, she's come around to this side. Um, there's a guy talking about the song as if he's summing it up. Like, hey, this is a song about ants. I'm, and then, you know, the, the key goes into minor key. He's like, oh, this is a dark part about where the king, where the queen goes and kills a lot of drones. Oh, okay. We're in the light part again. We're going to talk about ants again. And it, he's not singing. There's music. It's good music. But it's, it's just very funny. So I think even when you do something that's quote unquote not so good, as you said, you're, you might stretch yourself and write something strangely creative. But yes, yeah, Sibling Rivalry is a good song. Ants is a good song. They're just fun. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're 
when you do that, well, like I said at the beginning, you have a group of people, you, you, you try a, a creative project, and if it doesn't work, then it's okay. Stuff's gonna crash and burn, and we just keep going. I'm disappointed that the watch parties didn't work, but, you know, who cares? It didn't work. I move on. I do something else creative. I watch and make sure my dog doesn't mess with the computer. Please, God, don't do that. Sorry. Santa hat. Yeah, you step on that computer, you'll ruin everything. So, how about you get away? She's very big and muscly. Hi. So, uh, are there any other questions? I need to wrap up shortly. I've been going for about an hour, which is how much I like to do when we get together these days. Um, I will remind you guys again, if you support at the Patreon level, $3 or higher, and you want a card, please answer the Patreon email I sent you this morning. Uh, that would make my life so, so much easier. I've gotten a stack of uh, postcards addressed so far. I just need to write them. But, uh, yeah, that'll help me out a lot. And, you know, if you don't get it to me in the holidays and you still want a birthday card, no! Ugh, dog. Okay. She found something to chew on. Look, it's a thing you put in the outlet. Delicious. If I had feedback about your stream setup, where should I post it? You can email me. Is it not have the dog right next to the computer so you're worried and distracted? I watched a video on YouTube one time where these two guys were doing a commentary on the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, which was absolutely hilarious. That sounds really funny. Um, I heard the... There's a comedian who did a piece on uh, Pachelbel's Canon in D from the point of view of a cellist, because he started out as a cellist and how much he hates that song. And it actually inspired uh, Grant Bachoco to do a episode of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd where he goes back and Pachelbel has been dumped uh, by his girlfriend who was a cellist and so he decides to write a song with the worst, most boring uh, cellist part ever and that's that was inspired by this comedian. Hey Tish, good to see you. Sorry, I'm, I'm about to wrap up, but it's it's lovely to see you. Thank you for dropping by. One of our cats tried to climb the three-foot tree. It didn't end well. Yeah, that's... that's Sounds about right. Um, yeah, I'm sorry Dog Cam's not working anymore because she wants to lie right next to me, but Dog Cam was there for a little while. Um... Yeah, Livick, sorry. Uh, if you want to email me, mightymertgmail.com, and I'll just say that to everybody. I'm available at mightymertgmail.com. I'm available on uh, Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays, 12.30 Eastern Time. And if you want to ask me questions live on Twitter, I'm Mighty Mer. What else? I'm trying to think. I think that's it. I, I had a list of things I wanted to say. I will put the extra life information in the chat again if you are considering doing a uh, charitable gift at the end of the year. Consider Extra Life and Duke Children's Hospital, please. I've used Duke Children's Hospital before, and so I'm a fan. And, um, yeah. MightyMertGmail.com is where you can find me. And let's see. What else? Yeah, follow, subscribe if you can, or maybe just turn on notifications so I can see you next time. But uh, Or tell a friend, you know? Just bring more people. That's always good. And hopefully I'll see you on Thursday. Remember, uh, I have canceled the watch party, so the one that I had scheduled for tomorrow will not be happening. And But I will see you on Thursday for I Should Be Writing. And... Good luck with everything. I know it's stressful. I know productivity is really hard, but
but we can get through this because you should be writing, folks. Really. <laughs>